Hello, SOBs. Um, welcome to this uh, tutorial video. We're trying something new here on the Stream of Blood. So uh, Jared and Secret Game Master Clint have perhaps unwisely given me the keys to the kingdom to uh, speak my truth out there to the internet. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is um, how to create a character for a tabletop role-playing game, uh, something that uh, I've really begun to enjoy and has proved a real a real boon and um, a delight, especially over the, the weirdness of the past year. Um, tabletop role-playing games are a great way to uh, have fun with your friends in the boundless realm of imagination. Uh, so um, this is a tutorial on how I approach making a character for one, because that is, to me, one of the most fun parts. But I can also understand that it can be one of the more daunting parts, especially if you're just starting out. I know that I'm relatively new to tabletop role-playing games. I really only started playing them maybe three years ago, with luckily with people as talented as Clint and Jared and Thomas and Humphrey and, and all the rest of the people that populate this uh, weird world of the stream of blood have kind of taught me how to do it. But I was worried at the start when I got started that I would somehow be breaking these games if I if I if I made a character that was too out there or not quite right. And um, so, if you are feeling a little bit nervous, if you are doing this for the first time, or even if you're an old hand and want uh, some one another ding dong's perspective about how to do it, here's how I go about creating characters and just some things that go through my head. Um, so, uh, first, I think the first thing because. Uh, we're talking here about creating characters for any tabletop role-playing game, Dungeons and Dragons or Vampire or, or Call of Cthulhu or any one of the one of the infinity of worlds that you can create. Uh, the first thing is just, you know, the basics. What is the world of the game that you're making a character for? Um, and the good thing about this is you don't have to be an expert. You just kind of have to get like the vibe. I know that when I first, my the first role-playing game I played was like Dungeons and Dragons. And I was so worried, like what I, I want to play like a cleric, I think. And I, I want to have it be to this sort of God, but I don't know all the gods in the pantheon. Um, but uh, your game master and your fellow players can definitely help you out, find some sort of compromise. But if you got a general sense of what the of what the vibe is, so in Dungeons and Dragons, a a a, a world of uh, of fantasy, not unlike um, the uh, Lord of the Rings, or in a uh, Vampire the Masquerade, a, a gritty, uh, dark and twisted world of uh, of vampire skullduggery, or in the Call of Cthulhu, the world of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, and even if you aren't steeped in the world of H.P. Lovecraft, just that like creepy horror vibes set in a very specific time period. So just having a sense of the world in which it takes place just provides the first seed for uh, what kind of character you're gonna be inspired by. That's that's it, you're just looking for a little, a little kernel of inspiration. So once you kind of have just a grasp of like, like the basics of the world, then you just think like, what would be a fun character to be in that world. And that's how I go about it. I, I don't try to like pick maybe the most canonical thing or or, or the, the most kind of like on paper badass thing or powerful thing. It's just like, what is a character that would be fun? Let fun lead it. Um, because like, if you're having fun, then then everyone else is having fun. So uh, yeah, so for example, in, uh, in um, the Call of Cthulhu game that we play here on the Stream of Blood, uh, set in the 1800s, um, I, I had just finished learning about this uh, this um, uh, classical pianist from the 1800s, uh, uh, Gottschalk, and I was like, that would be a kind of interesting character to play, like a a uh, a, a New Orleans musician. Uh, that's a very very hyper specific um, 19th century type of person to be. That it would just kind of be interesting to see be slowly driven mad by the old ones from the great beyond. Um, and that's that's really all you have to start out with is just like one little kernel of inspiration. What would be fun to see here? And if maybe you're just like, you're maybe overwhelmed with possibility, another way to, to think about it is like, what would be a character that would maybe like cut against the grain of this world? So if you have like a world like Cthulhu that's very like dark and creepy, um, then maybe a character that is very kind of like, uh, Les élèves en roulé and jovial <laughs> fits fits kind of against that in a way that might provide some cool um, frisson. Uh, so uh, yeah, think about the world, a character that would be fun in that world, and maybe a character that kind of like 
cuts against it in an interesting way. So those are the, like the basic seeds that uh, I think of when creating a character. And then for further inspiration, there's just some basic questions um, that you can ask. So for a particular character in a particular world, uh, what are some of my or your favorite characters from existing fiction or uh, history that, that might inspire the character that you're creating? Um, so, for example, I already said in uh, in this uh, in the uh, in the Neptune Society, I, I, I had kind of in my head that that um, that classical composer Gottschalk as a as a jumping off point. Uh, but it could be anything. If there's a favorite character of yours from any existing IP or period in history, feel free to just like use them as inspiration and kind of like use them for spare parts to build your original creation. Uh, great artists borrow, brilliant artists steal. You know, uh, and then other basic things to think about, like what do, what do I want to look like on a totally superficial level? Uh, what what do people see when they see this character? Are they are they strikingly huge? Are they unassuming and small? Are they are they um are they ravishing to behold, or do they fade into the into the background? Um, what what sort of what what do they what do they look like? It's 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 cool to have that floating around just just for your personal imagination, and it also helps you to think about how they might behave in certain situations. Then on a total, totally practical level, what kind of voice do you want to do? <laughs> I realize that not every uh, role player at a tabletop role playing game is comfortable or even uh, um, <laughs> believes in doing character voices. Obviously, if you watch this stream, I am very much in the doing voices camp um, <laughs> for better or for worse. Uh, to me, that's part of the fun of it. To you, it, it might not be, but even, even having a sense of what their voice does sound like, even if you're not gonna do it, um, is is fun. Uh, do you want them to be gruff or uh, in the higher register? Do you want to take a swing at an accent? Um, and again, the thing that's guiding this choice is like, what's fun for you? Is it fun to do a voice uh, like Thomas does in the uh, in the in the vampire game that we play that almost blows his larynx out each time or larynx out each time he does it? If so, good luck and Godspeed. Um, and then, what sort of a Another question you might think of is like, well, what sort of uh, skills do you want the uh, character to possess? A lot of these games are built around like the uh, the skills and attributes that a character brings to the table um, uh, in terms of the kind of problem solving, whether it's uh, uh, puzzles, smarts, or combat skills. So, what's the what are the skills that kind of intrigue you? And uh, again, you can use those earlier questions like, what kind of what would be a fun character to be? You can just ask yourself, well, what kind of skills might that character have? So a a um, a, a scoundrel musician doesn't necessarily seem to have a lot of skills that might prove useful in an eldritch horror scenario, but as it turned out, um, him being sort of a, a weird classicist and a, a charming fast talker um, uh, ended up uh, ended up proving useful and interesting. Um, and honestly, useful isn't always isn't always the thing to do. I think we, I think we think of these game. you think of game and you think of something that must be won. But the fun thing about uh, role-playing games is like you win when interesting things happen. So your character doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be the most overpowered uh, person in the world. They just have to be uh, interesting. Even if they die, characters dying is tragic, fun, and memorable. So don't shy away from it. <laughs> uh, so then all those questions should provide you with a seed of a character, like the superficial things. What do they look like? What do they sound like? What what kind of other characters do they maybe remind you of? And then you can get into some more fun, deeper psychological questions. Um, and you can answer those like, um, what are they passionate about? Or what are they maybe despise? Um, so for uh, for like Curtis Krieger in the vampire game, he's 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 passionate about 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 freedom on the surface, but he's also very passionate about about being useful and about being liked and and cared for and feeling safe um, and pleasing the people that he that he trusts and has loyalty for and he very much despises um, being manipulated to do things for reasons he doesn't understand and seeing the people that he loves attacked um, so having those as kind of guiding principles will will really help you. Um, I think maybe the most important thing for any character that you play is, is question, are questions like that, ba the basics. What do they want? What does that character want? The thing that makes a character interesting is what they, what they desire. 
that they care about things. I think maybe the only mistake you can make when making a character or playing a character is making a character and playing them apathetically because characters that don't want things don't have reasons to engage in the world of the game. Um, I realize there's maybe some temptation to do that because we want to play characters that are cool, but even characters that have a cultivated and cool facade have that kind of facade for a reason. Uh, so it's up to you to decide why. Uh, other questions you can ask are things like, what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses? So like with uh, Orlando Robichaux, the, uh, the uh, scoundrel musician from the uh, Neptune Society, his strengths are uh, charm, uh, um, musical skill, um, and uh, ability to consume vast quantities of absinthe. And as far as weaknesses go, it's pretty much anything combat related. A stiff breeze could probably tip him over pretty quickly. Um, what, are, what are your character's fears? Um, it's important to think of uh, these characters, I think you're tempted to when you build them, to think of them only in terms of their strengths. Like how can I put together the most overpowered badass possible? Because you wanna, you wanna succeed in your various encounters. But it's also interesting to think of, of, their, of their weaknesses because weaknesses are what really make characters interesting. Um, so that having a character that is, that is all brains but no brawn is very interesting and vice versa. Having a character that is very, very sturdy in a fight but maybe very easily uh, manipulatable is uh, is interesting as well. Um, what are their fears? What do they What do they really fear? Like uh, uh, Curtis really fears being confined, not liked, not approved of, feeling that he's a failure. Um, I, I, one of the reasons I love Curtis Krieger in that vampire game is because he's such a bundle of of neuroses and, and self-recrimination and guilt. Um, he has so many weaknesses and he's just lashing out in all directions, trying to trying to like claim some sense of selfhood. Um, you know? Uh, so he's he's afraid of so many things that it turns him into the monster he maybe fears the most. Ooh, man. See, this is why you this is why you go to college English classes so that you can so you can really unpack stuff like this. Um, and, and like I said, the, the greatest, most, the greatest overarching char um, character question you can ask is what do they want? Even if it's not like something that, that falls within the purview of the game that your game master's setting up, like um, even like um, for, uh, for uh, uh, the uh, Warhammer game that, that we played, um, uh, where with Humphrey as game master, the uh, character I play there, uh, Lorenz von Eberhard was a, uh, a religious fanatic witch hunter. Um, uh, speaking of pop culture references, I was very much like just inspired by like, ooh, in a world where there are witch hunters, I just want to play like a, a baby version of like Christopher Lee from The Conqueror Worm. <laughs> so that was the inspiration for that character. Um, uh, and obviously um, uh, doing, doing a German accent was basically the main impetus. But um, uh, that character just wanted to burn witches to, uh, to to rid the world of, 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 of evil. As it turned out, he got to attack a bunch of, of supernatural things, but he never actually burned witches in that game. But that sort of like background desire to prove the, the, the metal of his faith guided him through all those, all those choices along the way. Um, so these are all questions that you can answer um, and ask yourself. Uh, and then when answered, we'll give you such a a deep sense of who your character is when you begin the game. But one of the most fun things about these tabletop role-playing games from a character perspective is that you can premeditate all of this stuff, but when the rubber meets the road of the game itself, your character kind of weirdly begins to reveal things to you that you didn't premeditate in a very cool way. Uh, that is one of my favorite things about these games is that you come in with all these ideas, but in your interactions with the other players and in the very, um, complicated scenarios uh, that the game master throws you, you learn things about your character that you didn't premeditate. And I feel like those are the most interesting things of all. Um, Jared is saying he'd like to hop in right now and, and, and comment. So give it up for uh, Jared, who's been lurking in the shadows this whole time. Hey, yeah, I've been lurking. Hey, uh, so we're going to play a game. Um, and the game we're going to play is... Uh, it's going to be a Conan the Barbarian game, and um, I'm basing it uh, very much on like Greek myths and mm. um, sagas, like the Odyssey and uh, the Iliad and things like that. 
Great. And the character types are basically like, you know, you can play any kind of warrior or archer, or you can be a sorcerer, but the sorcery isn't quite like D&D. It's like you get like one spell, you know, and it <laughs> usually is like summoning a demon or something. So, uh, Ross, I just need you to have a character for that um, as soon as you can. Do you think you could uh, come up with one for me? Yeah, I think I might. I might already have an idea. Oh, um, great. Okay, well, just send it to me. Uh, and, and thank you for giving this incredible talk. It's been awesome. <laughs> great. Um, so uh, I, I feel like Jared has just teed up a, uh, a fun example. A game world that's kind of like a sword and sandal based in a world that's not unlike Greek myth. So um, uh, so I just read that book, uh, Song of Achilles, if you've read that, which is told from the perspective of uh, Achilles' companion, Patroclus, who is his, um, his, his companion, his lover, and uh, his 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 aide de camp and fellow warrior, who is always existing in the shadow of this much much more vaunted um, uh, demigod uh, that Achilles is, and I would love to play a character kind of like that, like a um, like a uh, a camp follower. Um, devotee to maybe a more powerful legendary hero who is in love with that hero. Maybe that, and and it could be up to the game master to decide what uh what who that hero is. Maybe they're another player in the game. Maybe they're off somewhere doing something else in the game world. Maybe they disappeared, and I've got to find them. Who knows? Um, but I, I love the idea of a of a of a character who's in love with a much more with with a legendary warrior who's trying to prove to the world that he is worthy of the position of, of, uh, of intimate proximity that he has to that. I like, I like it because it fits in the world, but it also cuts against the grain of the world, right? Because you think of, you think of, uh, of, of the sword and sandal thing in that Conan way of just, just this hyper macho expression of like violent male id. Um, but there, I, this, this has some latent violence in it, but it is, it is still incredibly um, uh, passionate and sensitive. Um, and so you get to balance those two characteristics uh, in in this game we just made up off the top of our heads. Uh, hopefully, we get to play that again eventually. Um, so hopefully, that gives you a sense of uh, what you can do to uh, uh, to make an interesting character. Um, but my my final tip, uh, aside from from all those, is just uh, if you come to a situation in a game where you're like, "What? I don't know how to." do this? What, what would they do? Um, one, one easy technique is just like, trust your gut one, but also just like, think of it in terms of like, if then statements, like at this point, your character's already done a bunch of things that you've come up with through their backstory and they've done in the game. So if they've approached this situation like this, then they'd probably approach this situation like this. Uh, and you can, and you can take it from there. These games are just kind of like a long string of, of if thens leading to character development along the way. Um, so, uh, that's my wrap up on how to, uh, make a character. Uh, I hope some of you find that helpful, uh, or interesting, uh, and maybe you'll use some of these, uh, hot tips and tricks the next time you make a made up person, uh, and roll some bones and play, uh, these games around a real table or over a streaming platform like the one, uh, I'm currently on, uh, to discuss in more detail, join our Discord and follow our socials. All those links are below. And you can find me on Instagram at, at @rossbb, uh, And check out all the cool things that are done by Jared and the gang on Stream of Blood. Thanks so much. Happy playing.